All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're continuing with our company visiting this semester every week. Uh, we are fortunate to have a return visit from Westwood. Uh, this is your second visit? Yep. Uh, and a huge company. They hear tell us about this business operation and job opportunities. GIS people included also is a big company. Um, and also looking at co-op opportunities, type of jobs uh, for senior students about the graduates. Thank you for the crew, I appreciate it very much. Um, leave it up to you all to introduce them. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, who, who all is with is in survey, I guess the person who's all in the survey, who's all in GIS. Okay. So, I'll, we'll talk a little bit about both. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys are all able to make it. Thanks for coming and joining us um, for our 2024 visit. Um, my name is Ben Blix. I've been with um, Westwood since 2014. I uh, graduated from Ferris State University in 2000. Um, I work out of our Phoenix office. I, I lead our survey group out of that office. Um, I've licensed in five states, one of them being Alabama. and. Um, I've been working primarily in started off working with with land development, commercial, um, residential type projects, and moved transitions over to our power division and working on renewable projects in 2016. And I've been in that ever since. Um, Danny is also in our power group as well. Uh, Danny, this is your slide. I don't know if you got to see all of it, but I believe you're close enough. <laughs> Danny Trevor, I'm the National Field Survey Manager. Uh, responsible for all survey teams that work on power renewables. Uh, most of our crews travel. I have three regional managers, and I think we have like 42 buildings. I uh, started with Westwood in 2021, came from another firm. Uh, love and enjoy it. He put about people 40 years long career in there. Uh, great company. Love us to have been here. Give us a try. And we're uh, when we get, we're going to kind of cruise through our, our presentation and try to open it up more for questions for you guys. If you if anyone has questions on how internships work or what it looks like after graduation, that kind of thing, and try to make it a little more, a little more conversation. Um, if it comes to internships and field work type stuff, I can answer some of the questions. Danny works with our field crews daily and can answer a lot more questions than I'll be able to also. So uh, it'll be great having him here. Jack joined us last year, was, was with me last year when we came out here, and Jack, go ahead. I'm Jack Needham. I'm the Austin survey lead, uh, Austin, Texas. We do uh, land development, public infrastructure. Uh, I've been with them for a couple of years now. Started with Pacheco Coke, it was acquired by West Group. Yeah. So. Austin is a fast growing place, and we're always being with uh, You And Jack is primarily in our land group, land division, so mostly um, residential, commercial, multifamily, um, public utility, like they're more focused into the, into the Austin and Texas area, into that general region. A little bit about Westwood. There's not a, we're not going to, this was a long paragraph. I decided to change it and turn it into bullets. Um, we started in 1972 in Minneapolis. Um, it was started off as a surveying, uh, engineering and surveying company. Um, the the, the uh, founders decided to relocate to a new office space and the building that they located in that they relocated to had Westwood on the side of the building and instead of having to buy a new sign for their building they changed the name of the company. That changed in the 70s to Westwood and that's what we've we always are. said. Yeah, so that's what we've been. Um, we just recently changed our corporate office from Minnesota to Texas. Our new CEO is, is our Previous CEO uh, retired this October, and our new CEO is out of our Plano office, so he's we relocated our corporate offices to Texas. Um, we're an award-winning firm. We, we always, we're always getting into wide group uh, competition for engineering services, the AEC industry, and, and trying to improve our our standing in those. And most of those are all driven by our uh, employees and employee surveys, that kind of thing. So Westwood continues to grow and. Um, when I started, Westwood was around 300 people. We're somewhere around 1,700 now. Um, and some of that's from hiring people, some of it's from purchasing companies. 
Um, Jack was part of an acquisition in the, in the Austin area, and, and that's just part of the evolution of, of the company. Uh, we work with, like I mentioned, renewable and land development work. Um, that's some of the some of the uh, awards that we won this past year. Um, one of the big ones is the the last one there for engineering news record. Um, in our record, we've slowly been every year we improve our standing on it. This year we're we're down the under under 100. Uh, we want to get into that that probably that 20 range, and I mean that's that's a huge huge list to be on this year. Impressive companies on those. Um, West, this is just our our uh, mission and our our vision values. These were. The, the mission has stayed the same for several years. The vision actually has, has been pretty much stayed the same in that one as well. The, the values were revised a few years ago, and they were kind of a, uh, like a, it was a couple of different um, employee surveys. I did like the word cloud, word salad type thing, and pulled those words, you know, the, the different words, and, and a lot of them were related to these same five items that were already in our, already in our company. Uh, vision uh, and, and our values, and it was something that you know we realized that the employees all still were very uh, focused on these same five values, and it made sense to keep them and, and hold that as our value. Um, our services we offer, you know, several services throughout the company. We're trying to, you know, we're becoming a one-stop location for our clients they come in and they need environmental work done we have people who can do that they need design survey work done aerial mapping um, site design electrical engineering substation design um, we're able to do you know hydrology all those types of things and we're, we're uh, able to offer those things to our clients which makes it makes westwood very diverse also and at times when the economy is really really good um, for land development or for renewables Westwood's able to kind of roll with with whatever that tide looks like and, and you know help uh, help keep all the employees working and help uh, stay uh, stay very active during during different times. Uh, this was one of the technology we used. Um, if you guys were here last year, some of you may have seen this one. We use uh, iPads for all of our field crews. They work with. This is ran with Esri with uh, our GIS folks set these up for us at the beginning of the project. We pull information on our uh, information on the project. We can add data to it. We'll add surveys to it, corner records, um, other information. So when the field comes out in the field, they can go out and start searching for things. Um, most of that that top left image, a lot of those are red and green dots already. When they first go out there, those are all white, and the crew. As they pick them up, they change it to green if they found it, and then they take a picture of the monument. They take a picture of the monument. If there's occupation, one of the biggest things with uh, we, you know when we're evaluating boundary, we're evaluating monuments is how do the values relate to occupation as well. It's not just we're not just gonna do the math to figure out how the math works to fit the boundary in there. We also have to look at the the occupation and how that can affect boundary resolution. So the crew can go out. Realize that there's a survey attached to that particular parcel. They can click on the PDF for it and bring that up while they're out in the field. They can review that, say they don't find that monument, and they need to try and co-go in some other points to do some more search locations. They can do that without having to call the office and hey, how do we do this? And then they also being able to have this on the iPad, they don't have to have a the binder full of maps for an area to try and sort through all the papers. This information is handy and it's right there on their iPad for them. Um, we can, if we do have comp locations, we can put all that information on there so they can, when they go out there, they can look at it and say, okay, there's a capped iron rod that was out there, and that's what they're searching for. They find it, and like I mentioned, they change that to being a green monument or green green dot that they found it. They can add information to it, their point number that they sorted as, specific information, whether it's above ground, below ground, if it's bent, damaged, caps there, the caps not there, um, and then like I mentioned, take pictures of it. Uh, when they're in the field, pictures are worth a thousand words for us. When we're in the office and I'm reviewing a boundary, I, I don't know necessarily if it's a three inch monument or a two and a half inch monument. And looking at that picture, when they drop a tape measure on it, I know what they shot 
they'll take a measurement to see what the distance is from the ground to the monument, take a picture of it so we can see in the office, okay, we're, it's the monument that was called out on previous records. It's consistent with what should be in the field. So um, they can take out uh, locate areas that are of special interest. In this case, it's like a gate. So this one's a, it's a keyed gate, so they add notes to it that it's keyed. Take a picture of that location, um, and we can contact landowners or, or uh, whether maybe we can't get in. We need to find out who we can get access from, that kind of thing. Um, other points of interest, in this case, a vent pipe, um, same thing. Take a, they can locate it in the field with GPS, take pictures of it, and all this information is almost real time. Some of our areas, especially for renewables, are pretty remote. Some of our wind farms are 600 sections, and they're in the middle of nowhere, Montana or Wyoming, and there's no cell signal. Once they get back to cell signal, that stuff all uploads and it's ready. If they're in an area that has cell signal, I could hop online and after knowing the crew's been out there for an hour or two, I could hop online and just, ah, what have they, they found so far this morning? Green, 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 green. Man, this is going to be a good, some good information here. Now, or if it's all red, uh oh, we better start working with that by the way. Do you want to that GIS database yourself? Pardon? Do you manage the GIS database? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah, we have uh, GIS folks, and that's that's one of the things that's been really. Um, we have several people that we've hired as GIS technicians, and they that's their background is in GIS. We hired them to start off as being a survey technician, and as Westwood's grown, we've really implemented a lot with GIS back and forth between. Um, well, you know, what, how we use GIS with survey and the field crews and, and, and working with office technicians. And slowly we ended up with now we've got a GIS department that still works hand in hand with survey. So once we get done with our surveys, we we're setting up everything in CAD using. Um, um, gosh, drawing a blank. Uh, John, the uh, we're putting data information on all the fine work and all the entities. So there's close poly lines that are being taken. There's uh, the the uh, object data that's on it. When we're done with an ultra survey, we prepare that CAD file and export it out to our GIS folks. And they we only we not only produce an ultra survey that will that's a PDF that we can give to our clients. We can also give them an Esri based version of it. That you know if they're looking at a certain parcel and they say, well, Mark, there's a lot of line work going on here. I can't really tell what it is on the PDF. They can go to the Esri to the every base version of it. Click on the line work. It'll highlight that entire poly line, and it'll also pop up with when we have a, an Alta web app that we're doing for our clients. Those we also hyperlink the PDF file to those uh, to that that object data. So when they click on the poly line, it'll pop up with the data information, who the benefactor is of the easement, um, the landowner information. The recording information will be a link to the PDF file. They can click on it and see the recording document of that of that easement as well. So they can, you know, in, especially in large projects, they can figure out who they need to talk to to get crossing agreements shown. If there's a power line or a gas line, they a lot of times will have to cross those with collection information. They'll, they'll be able to do that um, and contact the right folks they need for it. So our uh, this past year we we had a lot of interns. I think. In the past, most of our interns have come from a lot of the Midwest area, Midwestern states, mostly in Minnesota because that's where our corporate office used to be located. Then there are several schools right in that little geographic area that that uh, we can pull a lot of interns from. A couple of years ago, we started reaching out to schools like coming to Troy and Florida Atlantic, Paris, and uh, and talking to students and, and seeing if we can you know find any interest in students who want to go work at one of the Westwood offices or join one of the travel crews. Um, our our office in Phoenix this past year, we overall our we had about 20 survey interns um, through either office or field this past year in 2023. Um, we had one ours in, in the Phoenix office was actually from the University of Florida Gainesville. Um, he doesn't have family there, doesn't live there. He came out at the beginning of the summer, met up with our field crew. He was in Phoenix for maybe a day and then was on the road for a month and a half, came back to Phoenix for maybe a weekend, was back on the road for the rest of the summer. He uh, did a great job. He's continued to work with us. Actually, his school schedule now has allowed him to 
the flexibility to be able to continue on with uh, office work. So if you've been assisting actually someone in our office at Austin office with uh, with doing CAD work. So something that he's able to continue doing, he's building more, you know, getting more experience and, and uh, just being able to, to learn that industry more. Um, we have uh, another gentleman from Idaho State University that we had this past year who did really well. Um, so, and these are all photos of their experiences from this past year. Last year, we didn't have stuff like this at all. These photos are all from people who did field work for us this past year. Uh, the one top left, she's actually going to be graduating and it's going to be coming on with Westwood full time after she graduates. Uh, Devin? Uh, Dawson. Dawson Baxter. Yeah. Um, the guy in the middle of the top, he's the gentleman from Idaho State. Uh, the other three on the bottom, I think. Those are all uh, worked in different uh, land offices, so uh, Texas or Minnesota offices for the most part. Uh, and these are all some of the projects that they worked on. So this past summer, we asked them just to their crew chiefs and and them to send in photos to us so that we could meet up. And we met uh, three different times this summer and had uh, survey leadership on the on the teams calls, and we had our interns on the teams calls and. Um, it was just, it was very cool, very interactive. They could ask questions, they could uh, ask questions whether it was project related or, or you know, anything intern related. And it was pretty cool to talk about their experiences. Um, the one, the photos here on the left are a wind farm. That's the base of one of the wind turbines. Um, as they, uh, as they started building it, poured it, went back and did post construction locations on it to make sure that it was at the elevation at the location that it needed to be. Uh, the gal on the top right, she actually is in our Denver office. Um, she has a GIS background, came in to do CAD work and, and work with us as well. Um, and it's continued on throughout this this season, to this, this school year as well. So she's a similar type of person being able to uh, have a flexible school schedule. Um, this one was some of the monuments that you, you know, our, our field crews have seen. Um, of course, we have the, the one that Jeff would just like to talk about with the pin cushion effect. Uh, we had something similar to that in Phoenix last year. We had a, one of our field crews located, um, but it was, they were lot corners, but they located two corners within half a foot of one another and they had the same surveyor's cap on it. It's like, that, I don't know, that might be, is that taking it to a whole new level? Find yourself. It's, yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It probably should have looked a lot harder. Um, so uh, in this various things that uh, one of our one of our seasoned crew chiefs, uh, uh, Carla, she's a great, great crew chief and she loves to find original documentation. Um, you know, like the township corner that she you know, they located right away that that sparks pictures, she posts stuff on it. She starts posting stuff on um, LinkedIn and you know, she gets excited and starts posting all kinds of pictures. So. Pretty amazing stuff that you get to see. Um, the larger one in the middle here is a one of the monuments along the U.S. Canadian border. Um, so yeah, they get to see a lot of different locations, a lot of different monuments. Um, again, these are you know pictures that we pull out of our out of our collector app, out of our uh, collector app, out of uh, field maps. So when the field crew takes pictures of these things, this is this is stuff that they're finding, and it speaks volumes to us when we're looking for a monument of some kind and find what they're looking for. Um, growth opportunities with us. There's uh, there are tons of growth opportunities from starting with being in, an intern to if you're grad, getting ready to graduate. Uh, locations Westwood is I think we're at 23 or 24 offices now. Um, there are several in several in Texas. Uh, we have one or a couple of them in North Carolina. Uh, and most of these, most of them have survey in them. The, the Texas office is probably not all of them. Uh, but there's there's a lot of land, uh, a lot of our land division is throughout the, the Texas offices. Um, we have our office in Phoenix, and we'll go over some of the offices here in a bit too. That there's pretty good map of, of what we have. Um, field experience: you're working on real projects. You're actually, you know, this is these are projects that are going to be, be going to be built at some point, or at least in our with survey. A lot of times they are. We might be doing the initial due diligence for them to help them figure out boundary to figure out whether or not it's a feasible project. They might we might do a survey on on six thousand acres, and they might decide there are too many encumbrances. We don't want to do it. They scrap it. Anyway, we might do 
$150,000 survey and they decide to scrap it afterwards because they decide it's not worth investing the multi-millions into development. So the stuff that you you work on that are, are real projects and real real life projects. So um, office experience, we've had a couple of folks, like I said, the, the couple of people who worked in the office, um, there, you know, you typically have to be in those offices. A couple of students that went back to different schools for uh, employment. That that was our uh, kind of unique situations, and in some cases worked out really well. Uh, this past year, we finally had our our last license. I think the last one we had hanging out there was New Jersey, and one of our uh, surveyors from our Minnesota office uh, locked that one down. So now Westwood is licensed in all fifty states. So, and many of us have more than one. Yeah, no, we had uh, Chris had uh, one of the uh, Chris Law had uh, Maryland. Oh, he's retiring, so yeah. So, right away, we have to get back. Oh, there's a new victory. Yeah, we even had Puerto Rico for one of Yes, uh, these are office locations. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is completely up to date now. Uh, a few in Minnesota. Kansas, Pennsylvania, so that we're kind of scattered throughout our field crews. Uh, if you're in a region, if you're saying you're in one of the Texas offices, you're in that region. That is primarily where you would be. You know, you could go back to your main office, I kind of think. Uh, for our renewable projects, the crews that uh, Danny and that we have on our, on our renewable projects, there we have two crews out of the Phoenix office. They aren't there very often. They're oftentimes everywhere besides. Yeah, okay. uh, they're all over the all over the try to keep them somewhat in their regions. They're mostly in the western region. Uh, Denver and Phoenix are both in the west region. Just just press there in order. Yeah. 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 So yeah, they kind of they get all over the place. And the the it doesn't they're not limited to those locations. We have a Minnesota or a Kansas crew right now who's in Washington. Um, so the, the crews are our Phoenix crews have been out of the East Coast before. So they they travel all over the place. They're they're either flown or they take a truck with a UTV or uh, they they'll have uh, reason or something their vehicles yeah. I'm working typically but like we had a big project in Pennsylvania more out game so we got crews from Charlotte Kansas City Minnesota we got crews from making the traffic that events so you still get adventure outside on too on the land development side we stay look we're within 100 miles of Austin so uh, they have overnight per diem, all that. We stay at home. Uh, so we have both of those opportunities available to you. Uh, we'll probably be looking at two uh, entry level with uh, field guys this summer and then possibly one office. So that's just what we have in one office. That's to say, that's just the Austin office. Yeah. Yeah. Austin is the fastest growing metropolitan area in the country. And we're one of the fastest growing companies in the fastest growing area in the country. So there's a lot of opportunity. This was this was one that I just put in uh, this this last year. They uh, I was coming back this summer from a meeting in Riverside County, kind of east of LA, and flying back to Phoenix and the the darker land along the bottom is I-10. And I as I was as we we're flying back, it's like, oh man, that's this. So it's like I said, I think we might be able to see some of these projects. And some of these, the the red one that's on here is a project that this this one which had been here before. The red project uh, was one that we developed in 2017, 18, and finally completed in 2020. Um, the blue one was one that was being developed following it right afterwards, and that one was also uh, another. Uh, another one of our projects out of our Phoenix office, and the green was a green one is currently under development. Um, so it's it was pretty cool to be able to, you know, as we're flying along to see those projects and recognize them. Like, oh my gosh, and the, the person next to me, like, I just so excited about taking pictures out of the window of the place for it. Like, ah, this is cool, middle of nowhere. Yeah, middle of nowhere. And just, oh, what? I, yeah, I mean, uh, but it's pretty neat to be able to see some of these projects. We have another one that we did uh, somewhere between here and Montgomery. And I've, Try to get by to see that one also, but it's not uh, it's not visible. So, um, what you can expect uh, with working with us, I mentioned real work, pro real project work, um, internship experience, a lot of different. Uh, we'll work with our environmental folks once in a while. So there's 
there's a lot of a uh, lot of crossword that we do as well as so we'll, we'll assist other other services in our in, in Westwood if we need to. Um, these are interns throughout the throughout the companies, not just survey interns. So we had quite a few interns this past summer. We've added quite a few from what we had before. It's um, we're looking to, to continue with that. And the, the best experience you guys could get is to, to have actual real world experience. It's just kind of a collage of the pictures of the folks that were that we had um, this past summer, and um, a lot of them were, you know, again, like I mentioned, they're they're all pictures that they had. Some of these were, you know, some of these folks up here, up here were office only, so they we get to participate in the office lunches and stuff like that, do some of those office trips. Some of these other guys got to go and see all kinds of different parts of the country. Um, um, also the one that I mentioned who's, who came back. She uh the, the picture in the lower right here. She uh when she got when she started with us last summer, she gets to the airport. She walked when she walked out of the airport, those two gentlemen picked her up. Uh, that's Austin. Both of them did. Yeah. They picked her up and when she is getting out of the airport, she walks up to the survey truck and these two big furly dudes are picking her up and she's like, what did I get? What I, I, I three warned her though when she came to Dallas for her. Right, yeah. So she, uh, but those two guys took her under their wing, and she had an absolute blast. She, she had a great. That she's coming back as a full time employee. So she actually gave them when we, uh, her final day in Kansas City, she gave them both hundred dollar gift cards to take to her house. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah she had, she had a great. Set. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. I mean, our our crew chiefs they want to make sure that they're, you know, you're you're not just there to to swing a hammer and to carry equipment, you're you're helping make their life easier also. So they really appreciate all the assistance that you're able to they were able to provide. She was pretty happy about the uh, amount of money she got to save too for the summer. Yeah. Um so we we've, we've got uh you know we're hiring for all these different positions. Um primarily with internships. Um and I can send the I don't know if that QR goes in here very functional on here, but I can um, email that to yeah. Dr. Ruth too, and we can make sure that you guys get a copy of that. Um, but that, that would take you to a location where you can upload, you can just submit your, your contact information or you can upload a resume if it's something you'd be interested in. Um, yeah, for those other ways also, we have a whole marketing group that connects with us. I primarily see most of our posts on LinkedIn. Um, and that seems at least that maybe that's just more where I don't uh, more that's active. Where that's where I see a lot of survey activity. So seeing a whole lot of hiring. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you look at Westwood on LinkedIn, they're they're posting for job openings steady. So if you go to our website, you search for various offices, there'll be a, a field intern, an office intern. So there's there are definitely a lot of options out there um, and, and permanent hires as well. So. Um, there we go. Probably ten minutes. If you guys, uh, yeah, ask us ask us questions and yeah. Um, where would the relation here be? So after we graduate, for example, not necessarily an internship, but um, where would we kind of start off? Um, if we were to um, take more video, it definitely it depends on your experience. Like for for us, for the I would say it's probably similar for most, even for regardless whether it's uh land or renewables. Um, it depends on your experience and how much field work you've had or office work you've had. Um, if you've done a lot of work, that's another thing. If you've done a lot of internships, you were interning for the entire time you were at, you know, every summer you were you were in college, that builds on your resume really that and say, well, this guy might come in as a, you know, this this guy or gal may come in as a, as a seasoned crew chief already. He's been doing this for for four summers, and you, you might really know your way around doing things. So usually we try to put people, bring people in and keep them in the field for at least the first couple of years and then um, transition them to the office. It also depends on um, like the, the field work, especially if you're pursuing survey, uh, the field work is I mean, that, that's critical to your development and your professional development. I have a gentleman right now actually from Florida Atlantic University. He started with us two years ago. Um, Florida Atlantic requires you to take the fundamentals exam before you graduate, which he did and passed. Uh, so he's been 
and LSIT with us for the last two years and in the field as a crew chief for us the last two years. He just passed his principles and practice exam at NCES in January, and he was asking, you know, like we're looking to transition him to the office now. Um, he was asking about, well, should I take my Arizona state statute license? I don't know. You you could you could absolutely study it. He's a smart smart yeah, person. He could he could pass it. He could take he could study for it and pass it next week. But if you're licensed and you hold a license. Are you prepared to um, are you prepared to for me to give you a boundary survey for one of our projects and say here take this from start to finish? Well, no. But I don't think you're ready to be a, a surveyor yet. You you've got the smarts to do it, but that real world experience, that that actual experience is something you have to build on. So I wouldn't want to discourage anyone if they think, oh, well, I'm gonna start off with a company, I'm gonna go in the office, or I'm gonna go out in the field for two years afterwards or three years after. That is critical experience that you need to have to, to move on. So typically we would bring someone in as a uh, as a crew chief or um, usually a crew chief. Usually our graduates have had some experience and most students have had some internships and come back in and come in. He was a crew chief right off the bat. I think he was maybe a broad man for a couple of weeks, but he transitioned to a crew chief pretty quick. And yeah, I have no question. One survey tech that has no field experience whatsoever, and it's the one thing he wished we did have. Uh, it it kind of handicaps him a little bit. Uh, so we definitely try to push that. Um, one of the guys that I had start back here, he was actually a GIS uh, graduate from the uh, University of Wisconsin. And uh, he came in, uh, and he's a IO right now, out in the field. Uh, he's going to put in a year or so. Um, and then we'll move them into the office. So it just kind of depends on your career path, on um, your past experience, but uh, it definitely helps you if you have that few of experience. Mark, mm -hmm. take it from, I came from the field to office, and I've seen people who plug into the plane office where I'm in Dallas, and they come in, they can be the best data tech in the world coming into the office, but if they never put their feet on the ground and you just put together a bunch of line and dots and and you've never been in the field, it's it's a lot harder to learn from office to field than to field to office. Yeah. Field works, it's fun to me. It's called me old, like the outside, but it looks pretty, pretty poor. If not, you're just getting any of these companies that say, well, you got your license, you know, when you're at school, come on in and start in the office. To me, they're setting you up for failure. They're not, they're not looking out for you guys. And it's not that we're trying to hold someone back, but we want to set you up for the good survey. Have a good career. You don't want to set somebody up to fall. On the GIS side, I don't know how many of y'all are GIS. We bring you right in. Uh, you know, like, we've got several different programs on the land side. Uh, we had an open recently. And, uh, we run what's called a Westwood Agent. We bring in a lot of the public GIS data and put it in our portal. And then we use that uh, with our clients to help them find sites. Uh, we'll combine all the tax parcels. Uh, we'll do a search for a client. If we want any site that's 20 acres within a half mile of a major intersection that holds utilities. Boom, they all color up green and give them a list. They go uh, look and see if those are a bit able to be purchased. Uh, so we do some of that. We're also doing uh, text lot work. Uh, it's kind of boring. Uh, that's my GIS guy that is working field. He does both. He works field and then he works a couple hours every day on GIS. And it, it's real boring, but uh, he's he's getting introduced into it. And we're going to advance it into some other stuff. But it's there's opportunities, land, uh, power on the GIS side. Um, also, uh, the main reason my guy decided to go survey is he's going to make more money in survey than he is in GIS. I, mean, I don't know if that's universal everywhere, but in Texas, RPLS is going to make a lot more money than GIS. Uh, it's, and it's you can do both. You can have your GIS. Um, you can go get your RPLS, and then you got to you're a double threat. Then it helps a lot. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, since y'all are nationwide, do y'all find housing for internships or? Oh, how does that work? Um, there, that's, it's something that our HR folks will work with with people on. So, like, 
say you know you wanted to join one of the GIS groups from Minnesota or something like that, and you didn't live. That's something we'd have to bring up with our HR folks, and they they do have a uh, couple. They have they've got a couple of ways that didn't work that, so it just depends on the best solution for you. Uh, yeah. But it would, it's definitely something you can bring up. Can you give them an idea of what your employment look like benefits? Um, as a permanent employee, we I, I think we have a very good um, benefits package. We have uh, um, a 401k. The company matches four percent. So the first four percent you get in there. So you put in four percent of your own company matches at hundred percent. Um, there's no vesting period with that, so it's four percent right away. You don't have to wait for five years to be able to take that on out. Um, we have a very comprehensive uh, health and vision, dental, pet, life lock, uh, uh, insurance packages, and um, we have good PTO. Uh, one of the things that I think is very unique. And a lot of people probably say it, but um, the the culture at Westwood is they're just very different as well. Especially, I mean, I can't speak as much with our land folks, with our renewables folks. We meet every week uh, as leadership, and like our, you know, we encourage our employees to to work back and forth. So, like my guys in my office are working with people in our Denver office, in our Kansas City office, in Minnesota. There's no. There's no like, oh, we have to keep everything tight, keep everything close. Like, man, I'm overloaded this week. I, I can't get all the stuff done. Well, at our workload meeting on Monday, Kansas had some availability. Why don't you see if they still have some technicians available? And they, by doing that, they're working with other people also. So they like, at, at some point, they get to the, they're like, they get to a stage where they don't even ask me for it. They just, you know, they know that they're overloaded. They reach out to, uh, to Matt in Denver or they reach out to, uh, Joey and Kansas are in Charlotte, and they are able to get their projects done without having to. So it's it's very cool. There's a lot of companies that they do that. They'll they'll get very siloed in their locations. And Phoenix is Phoenix, and Plano is Plano. And they did Westwood. And I mean, that's one of the huge messages for our CEO this year. And then our previous CEO had the same the same mentality. Westwood wants to be a billion dollar company by 2030. And we um, were on the path to get to being there. Um, and one of the things that they talk about is all of our divisions, all of us, you know, Jack's a business unit leader, not a business unit leader. Uh, we're all, all of us work, have to work together and we all have our own little parts to play, but at the end of the day, it's one Westwood. It's not multiple different, we're, we want us, we want Westwood to operate as a cohesive group if something needs to happen and it's uh that, that's that's been the message that they've put out for a long time and, and it's it is actually true it's true it doesn't you don't know, feel like oh they're pushing something on us it's, i don't feel like that i just the people that i work with that's i mean i, I never work with jack on projects and no problem if you ever wanted to but i want to reach out to jack and ask him questions we've had three of us don't get together very often and we've had a great surveying conversations and work conversations the last day and a half. So I mean, it's stuff that it's, it's pretty nice to be able to do that. Land development side, we have meetings every week. And like two of my guys are helping out the Fort Worth office right now. Uh, we'll help San Antonio. San Antonio will help us. Uh, our field crews actually meet at San Antonio field crews just for fun. We'll go out, we'll go to some group of uh, and it's mainly just to build relationship. And uh, we also have where uh, I like for my text to know the text from San Antonio or from Fort Worth, and that way they can reach out and they can help with anything. So there's a lot of uh, help back and forth. Um, it's it's not just something we say, it's actually something. And, and we, we work with development also, like that kind of through some of those slides, but Westwood encourages people to get their CST training. Get CSD certification. If you're not familiar with it, check it out on an SGS. Uh, they have levels one through four, and it's at entry level of one. Level four, you're essentially an LSIT. So at that point, you could either go level four or pursue your fundamentals exam. Um, Westwood encourages that. We actually right now are having a training program for anybody, any of our technicians who want to pursue their LSIT. They are meeting. We we hired a trainer out of the, out of Denver, Colorado, who's meeting with our folks and going over uh, I think once a week or once every couple of weeks 
and going over preparing them for the LSI team and getting them ready for it. And also the IEU capacity. Yeah, and they get incentive bonuses and spot yeah. bonuses for passing. Um, we just uh, three weeks ago or something like that had a field group summit, and we had our crew chiefs all go to Kansas City, and they went and went over concerns they had in the field, problems they run into in the field, successes they had in the field, things they'd like to see for training, and it's not just it, it's not just lip service. They are, I mean, Danny and and. The rest of the leadership on his side of, of, of survey are in the, the field survey. They take that to heart and they're going to develop training programs for our field crews and for our crew chiefs and that kind of thing to help grow them and with their experiences. So it's where Western is very, very uh, supportive of continued education and your professional development. Yeah. Uh, so you get, so you had UAS on there? Yep. Or is that what I'm uh, we are. We've been expanding that a lot, uh, um, a lot. We and we have three units now. But now we have three heavy units carrying their own, uh, their own flight arc sensor, maids, uh, three sensor educators, um, and they also have their, uh, they have their own cameras. So yeah, it's their their heavy hybrid, heavy payload hybrid. I believe those are all now being sent for the development dump, and they're all now being uh, transported around in their own one ton Mercedes vans. And it's basically a command center for them to travel and all of them to do those. And they're, they're producing the quality LIDAR information and, and uh, aerial photographs that you get from the uh, van flight. The land side, which you'll just use on a Oh, it is mainly for imagery. Um, and we'll do that on the case. Um, so power is, is a much, much bigger bird, a lot more money in the air. Land side, we're just, we're just getting refunded, basically. No, for the land side inside of that. So mainly you focus on the trees and the boundary, right? Yep. Township and section four. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, how much it, how much in terms of percentage right it, is that in the land side? I mean, do you do other thing like topographic survey, but yeah, is it mainly that boundary improvement? Like I would say in Austin, our average project is a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Twenty thousand of it is boundary. The rest is topo construction, staking, or whatever. Any license survey do that? Oh, um, oh, oh, we got two in Austin. Yeah, I, I think I, I want to say we have, uh, I think the last number I saw was like 196 total licensed surveyors to the company. There's quite a few seafarers. Yep, there's several seafarers. I was because you know the little screen from the office and you walked in, I know it was still 190 something. Yeah, the other day. It's, so there's a lot of experienced professionals out there that help them. Oh, and it's, it's yeah. great. I mean, I, I, I like, like I mentioned, I, I mean, I don't, I don't work with Jack that often, um, but it, it's great to be able to call someone from another office and know that there's resources. Actually, I had a, an issue with one of my California surveys and working with the, with the county surveyor, and he was just questioning my boundary. I, I, I still understand what I did to my boundary, and I ended up going back and, and contacting a couple of our other California licensees, and I'm like, hey, this is what I'm doing on this project. Let me know if you think I should look at something else. Am I missing something? And it was great to have somebody else who's licensed in that state also and say, yeah, that's that's what I would have done also. Okay. And then it ended up turning out I, I had an hour long conversation with the county survey here that described everything that I did. Like as many times as you want to turn in one of those surveys and give it to them and they redline it and they send it back and you look at it. My face gets beat red. And I'm like, Why is he asking these questions? And I was like, okay, I just went through and wrote down his red line comments and I called him and went through them with him on the phone. Great conversation. Okay, yep, just go ahead and resubmit it. I'll approve it. <laughs> that phone call was great. That saved me all kinds of pain. So, yeah, communication is key. Just to show kind of how we interact, uh, recently, uh, Kyle, who's the head of our Dallas office, he has uh, Chase Bank clients. And he was needing some out of state work. So he reached out to, I can't remember his name from North Carolina, 
Uh, uh, Bender, Matt. Yeah, Brandon Bender. And uh, he was needing something signed. Well, Brandon was actually in Austin visiting. Oh, and yeah. this project was, I think, North Carolina. I don't remember what state it was. So we printed it out on our plotter so that he could sign it. And yeah. We mailed it to the client from our office. We had nothing to do with it. But actually, Ben was there. Yeah. And, and it was just a, a big, quick interaction between all of us to get it done and get it to the client. You call anyone in this company, and I've, I've done it many times, whatever division it is, and I say, hey, what is the situation I'm in? Yeah, I need your help. Everybody's more than willing to put down whatever they have to help with. Anyone, anyone you call, I mean, even someone like the directors of power who are my boss, call them anytime. As long as we're not on the meeting or busy, they'll answer the phone, talk to you, help you fix whatever you have. We, we share, we talk to anybody and everyone. It's just pretty neat to be able to. Uh, and our, our new CEO is, hasn't been in that position that long. Uh, our previous CEO, it no problem calling him or texting him, or uh, it was just, it was kind of a weird, it, very cool, but very weird feeling. You're like, oh, yeah, that's going back. Oh, you're talking to Paul? Yeah, absolutely. He's got to be, and when he would pass, pass through the office, he would always come through and visit everyone and, uh, and, and, how old was that in my plan too? Do they go past walk by the office, knock on the door, talk for a little while? Yeah. It's a little hard to visit all the offices now that we have 23 or 24 yeah. of them. So it's, yeah, we, haven't had, we haven't had the pleasure of having them around the rail. Who brings your competitor for that? Uh, for, uh, for us on the renewable side, we have probably like, uh, um, I would say, well, Sam is a big one. Um, Abel Hicks is another one. Wilson. They, you know, and, and really, one of our clients was just, they had a, an announcement this past fall and the development that they have coming down the pipe, what they're planning is more work than Westwood could do at all. Like if they gave us all their work, we still couldn't get it done for them. So that's just one of our clients. So they have to be able to, to provide, you know, they have to be able to work with our competitors because we can't do all their work for them. It's just, it's gonna happen. That's just one client. We have you know, several renewable clients who that's, that's uh, that's a big, it's a big task. And the housing development clients are the same. They, they, and a lot of them like to work with various companies that are local to those regions because they know the ins and outs of those big agencies and stuff. So, yeah, if there's, there are a few, there are quite a few competitors, but they're, they're all the Any more questions? I know some of them have to leave. <laughs> no, if they need to get back to you. Uh, I have some cards up here. Cards? Yep. I can send it to you directly. Yep, or? absolutely. Cards up here, get a hold of me. Um, I'll send you the QR code that was on there. Um, and you can pass it around to everybody. And, um, yeah, well, okay. yeah, feel free to jack out some cards here. So, yeah, feel free to read. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.